Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to continue working in our API server. Not sure we're going to finish in this one, second part, or probably we're going to do the third one, but let's get started. When we left in the last video, we created the hello there endpoint in the root. So whenever we just call it using Insomnia, you can actually see the preview of our API. That's pretty neat. Remember that the code is actually just importing Express. We're using Express.js. We created the app. We established the port. We created an endpoint, the roadmap, and we send a message. And that's it. So this is the basic Express application. What I want to do now, I want to expand the functionality of this Express application to be a little more production ready. Not completely production ready, but a little more robust. And for that, we will need to add a couple of different, um, we're going to say, libraries to this application. So one of those libraries that I want to use, I want to start using EMB variables. As you remember in previous view videos, we are saving secret keys or specific keys in an EMB file. And those just get loaded whenever we have it. That way we don't have like somehow uh, um, secret keys in our code. So I want to start using configuration, uh, some paths, um, later some keys probably, save it in a base file. That way when we put this code in GitHub, it will not be saved uh, like that. So let's, let's get started. So for that one, we're going to use .env. .env, what it does is use env files, the simple that you would like this, as you can see it's, it's similar, and then we can access those to process.env and the name of the variable that we're using. And that's pretty much it, like there's not much to see there. We need to install it and we just need to use it like this. Um, uh, we will use a little bit different probably in this scenario, but uh, something because we have the new power configuration for the importing. So let's, let's do it. So let's do npm install dot env. Perfect. That will allow us to have a new file dot env. And as you can see that file is automatically um gray it out so because it's already in or did ignore somewhere there i don't remember where but somewhere there here you go so we are already skipping it so we are fine with that so after we have that though in dmb um something that we like to use here is use title and let's call this um uh, no gs API server and let's use the port to to be 3000 so now what I want to do is I just want to use the title and use the port in order to send it so let me what I need to do I need to in this case because we change the EMB variables we will need to console the server and we will start that in a minute. So in order to make this to use, inside my source, I will create a new file called, well, inside a directory, actually, helpers, helpers, or functions could be, but let's, let's call it helpers. And inside the, that helpers directory, I want to use .env.javascript file. In here, we're going to use a simple import .env from .env and we use a simple .env .config. That way we make the configuration available and we need to import that in our index files. And, and in this particular case, we need to be import at the very beginning because the environmental variables need to be loaded first. So here, we're going to import a file. I'm going to be from helpers.env and it's actually going to be imported. 
Um, I need to remove this. Yes. There you go. Just doing this, we can actually change this one from here and call it to process.env.title. And we start our server. Now we can see we will sell. Ooh, it's not working. Title. Oh, wait. Title is like this. There you go. No API server. So now we're able actually to pull up those email variables the way that we wanted. Something that's important for the port, we just need to do parse. Well, in this particular case, let's call const title equal this or server and let's just send the title directly here. That way we fell back if this doesn't exist. We go. We use this, this um, string as the title, and we are sending both. So for the port, we're going to do something similar. So we need to parse or process the env that port, and we need to parse it. Why didn't I get? Oh, because process will do less. Hmm. Missing Radix parameter. Oh, we need to parse it base 10, right? And here we're telling us take that number that we have in the port. Now, everything that came from the process CMB is a string, and the port needs to be a number. So that's why we are parsing as an integer base 10, we have the port. If that doesn't exist, we just do. I don't know, let's use the 3000 as the follow. So with that, we can see the server just get restarted. And we can send this and it's still working the way that it's supposed to. Pretty neat. Now that we have those EMB variables here, we're going to start using something extra. I want to start using Morgan. Morgan is a simple HTTP request logger. And it's pretty cool just to see how the calls are actually made to the application. And I will show you in a bit. So this is what it was is going to be doing. I don't know if there is an example output here. No, there is not. But let me show you how to use this in Express. We just import Morgan and we use Morgan and the type of the logs that we want to have. Combined is the production standard, I will say it like that. It's like some kind of IIS or Apache, like Tomcat servers or maybe um, Nginx, stuff like that. Use the combined way. But we have here, uh, let me just get up. We have Tiny. Oh, with the minimal short development purpose, the common the standard Apache common log and combine it with the standard Apache combine log output. And it's, it's actually pretty neat. So let's actually use it and let's show you what, what it what it does. So there's an npm install Morgan. And we will not use it as a helper because we don't need to configure like .env. So we can actually import it right here and the and let's call after express let's do import morgan from morgan there you go my two completion is working that means that this is installed and before the port after the application is created we can actually actually let's do the port first and the application later and let's do application.use Morgan before any route. 
that means that we are going to put this is some kind of middleware. A middleware is a function that will run between requests. So what we're doing here is before any request, you're going to be using Morgan. And Morgan, the only thing they're going to be doing is parse or lock everything. So now that I have that, I want to show what it does. And for that, I need to go to the server. So we have the application restarter. We call this. It should work. Oh, wait. We forget something. The way it's combined. And this should be a string. There you go. application loaded perfect let me send it and we have this and if we go to the output we can see this on the logs it's telling me the IP address the date the type of request the type of repose response and the code and the time I believe and like who made the call right something like that so something that we can actually use here is we can go to the EMB file and let's put um, Morgan log and let's call this development because I want to do the development right now in in the development market later in production we can actually change this and it's actually pretty neat so let, let's put Morgan log like that that means that here instead of sending combine it the same process dot emb dot um, morgan underscore emb we save it we restart the server npm on dev Remember, every time that we change the EMB, we need to restore the server. Um, the final format I didn't like it. Why didn't like it? Morgan EMB doesn't exist. Oh, it's Morgan Log. Actually. Okay, get restarted, and now everything is working fine. I don't have this issue. That means that when I make the call, I have this little output, and it's, it's a little smaller, right? And, and I see a did get request to root, I respond with 200, it took 2 points milliseconds, and this, I believe, is the size, if I might correct. Let me check. So let me see, development, response content length. Yes, this is the size of the response that I sent. So it's, it's, it's pretty, I believe it's, it's cool. Um, method, UL, status, response, name, from spawn time. It's from like the dev file, you just change this order pretty much. Yeah, well, I believe that should be it, you know, development. So now our application will log every call that we are using. So if we make a call to something that doesn't exist, we get 404 and that get loaded too. Now we have 404 in this particular uh, path. And it's pretty neat, we can actually see our calls and we'll see that if the server received it correctly or not. So it's really good to troubleshoot. Now, as you can see, we need to handle those 404, but we want to get that later. Let me get back to this. The other thing that I would like to add is course. Course is stands for cross origin resource sharing. It's a mechanism that allows restricted resources on a web page to be requested from another domain. This is going to be important because the application that will use this API that we're creating is going to be in another server in another domain. So it's important to have a course enabled. By default, um, what the course does 
is enabled to everybody. This make pretty much makes enabled to everybody. And you can see it's really simple to use. We just import it and we use it. And that's it. And we can actually um, ch change the origin. And when you specify the origin, you say, okay, only requests from this URL are the ones that are going to be allowed in our application. So let's actually make this. So let me install npm install course. I will go here and I will go to origin. By default, in development, I will put everything. So we can actually use a star in there. And this will allow for us to use import course from course. And after Morgan, we can actually use application.use course. And then we send the origin is going to be process.env.origin. And let's add up. With a simple that we will make it. We will not see any difference in our code. Let me actually restart it. Let me get out and return. And if I send this, we we'll still have the same. We nothing will change for us. But at least uh, it's going to be a it's going to work for the future. That's why we have it there. Okay. Next is the one that I want to add here. Um, let me show you something for this call. Whenever we did the call, let's see the header response from the server. Here we have the expo where by and see which kind of server do we have. Right, access control origin is the one that we just created right now, that's what say everybody. And content type is a JSON by default to express the content leg, e tags and dates and stuff like that, right? So this is basic information. Now for security reasons, export was powered by it need to be removed. We need to remove this one to not, not to put it in the response. Why? If a hacker wants to attack your site or your API, can actually see the X powered by and can see the type of server that you have. And then those attacks could be a little more targeted to that specific server. So we need to hide it, right? Um, in order to prevent other common attacks, uh, we need to add extra headers in there. And it could be a little bit troublesome to do so, but it's pretty cool that we have an NPM package for that too. So Helmet, it helps you secure your Express application, setting various HTTP headers. And it says it's not a silver bullet, that doesn't mean that just putting header Helmet will make your application bulletproof or will make your application unhackable but will help you very much the way to use it is pretty much the same import it and the application the express application will use it and this is a middleware and we need to remember it's going to be a function this is what it does will add content security dnf preface space framework high power by so we'll pretty much enable all this by default. You can pick and choose what you have there, but if you use Helmet directly, it will apply all of them right away. Now, it's outside the scope of this course to see what one of those actually are. But the one that I will show you here is to hide the power by. So just remember how many calls, how many headers it gave, right? Let's now import helmet. Sorry, npm install helmet. Helmet. <laughs> I need to helmet without that extra end either. Perfect. So we use to do import helmet from helmet, and we use a simple application. dot use helmet <laughs> again I put that extra in there okay 
So with that, and we can see that it just gets restarted. Perfect. So let me make the same call, right? Everything's working the same. We have the logger in there. And now we can see the header change from 8 to 17. I believe it was 8 before. So one of the cool things that you can see that X power by is not there anymore. Right? Now we have security policies, basic security policies, prepare, explain options, emoji. So it gives you more you know, secure headers to have in your request. And they are added by default. So this is pretty neat. So that's why I like to use it. And your application is working pretty much the same. As you can see, load time is pretty much the same. Let me request a couple of times more. As you can see that we have a very little less than one millisecond response time. That's, that's pretty neat, right? Now, there's something extra that I want to add. Um, as was mentioned in the last video, console log by default because the rules that we have is not recommended right this is still working but it's it's a warning we use the yellow thing it's a warning that means when we make a call inside the root path and we have it right there it could be convenient yes it could be um, but sometimes it's not um, um, we need to handle it a little bit better, right? So console log is not the best way to expose something here. And at the end, this probably will be saved in a, a different file in a production application. For now, let's keep it like this. So what I want to use, and I forgot to add it. I want to use pin logger. Pin logger is a simple logger that's actually really fast. And it gives you a bunch of information about that one. And with Pinot Print, we have something like this that will allow us uh, having some requests and verify the type level and what we actually do in there. And it's actually pretty neat. So the way to use it is going to be very simple. We need to install npm install Pinot. And we will we'll, a simple as import Pino from Pino, right? And then we'll do const logger equal Pino. That means that we can actually get this and do logger.info inside the root path. As you can see, we remove that one from that warning and it will make the call. Application still works. And now we have something like this. And um, it's telling us when we actually call it. The PROM is the process ID in my computer of this application, the host name, and what is the message that I'm actually sending, right? That's pretty much what we are doing here. But um, this is no user friendly, this is a little more for other kind of production, I would say, applications that parse the, the, the host file or the logger file. This is more for the access log things, right? So you can actually have a parser and a server that will look through the logs of your application and that's a little more production thing, right? So I will skip all that. Uh, there's something really cool about Pino that they have that Pino Pretty. Pino Pretty, what it does, it changes this ugly thing to something more readable. To wait to install it, we will need to install Pino Pretty. npm install Pino Pretty, and um, is. It's beneficial to actually import install it globally in your computer, not in your project. 
and when you create the application you put the pin operator there again why because that pin operator means that your logging is a separate process outside node.js what does that mean node.js will should not be handled the log because whenever you write something in a file or you write something in console it takes time but those responses that we saw there sometimes are slower because node.js is, is printing something when then we pipe it out in a process like this we're sending the response to another process and node.js will just handle the request that you need so this is a little more production ready we will skip this right and we just put in our logger this configuration like this and let's actually put it colorized through so that means that here we create an object and we put that there that means that now if I get a request I have a, a better way to see it this is my message and this is the level the level is important because if we have an issue we can actually do a warm for example I will tell us we'll see it right away there or we can actually do something like an error so let me call it again and we we'll see it as an error so it's, a, it's going to be a simple way in a development environment to actually see when something is a little more informational when it's a warning or when we have an error and we can actually put those error working for us and it has a little color that means it's going to be a little more simpler for, for understanding something now that we can use we can send a callback function here to do something now that we have the logger we can put the logger the log and we can say application started at http localhost process .org. this is what we'll do but whenever we restart the application we will see something like oh logger.info sorry for this <laughs> it's going to let's put a log in the info level and it will say whenever we start the application we will see this application starter so that was if we console this um, let's clear everything npm on development so when we saw this message we know that the, our service is ready now we can actually make a request and we can see everything inside there the way that it's supposed to but let me remove this server because this is going to be actually evil and that's pretty much what we have here now our application is a little more robust as you can see now um so something that i want to use now it seems as you can see we have this local host here but it's not sorry here but in reality it's not recommended right um because if we put this in our server it's not going to be local host anymore it's going to be a different path or something different so i want to use something called the url so let me I will create a new folder, let's call this url.javascript and from here I will import url from url right. I don't need to, to install it because this already came with node.js that's why we can actually just import it like that and I can do export cons I want to export something and let's do um, for URL equal and it's going to be a function 
Actually, no, it could be a string directly. And this is going to be a URL dot format. And let's format the URL with different version. So let's. Oh, we have an issue here. Deprecated since version 11. Deprecated in this one for the API. Oh, interesting. I didn't know this, but mm, let me see what we can actually do. Okay, URL object is the one that they want us to use. Okay. Oh, this is. Let's look for that one. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know this. So let's actually research it. Let me see what it is. Like it's a community, but let me look then for what WG URL API. So this is already deprecated. Interesting. You will host. Let me look for Express Yes Host. Let me see if we can see that. Okay, we can get it from the request. But, um, application path. What is this one? Block path is the block use. It's a model express app. Okay. So the path is just the rest base URL. Let's look for no GS base URL.
Black Falcon, Black Cadder Hose. Yeah, but no. I was saying this was the old way. This is the address. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So sorry for taking this long. We, we were learning together. Or well, I was learning and I will show you my point of view. What I want to use is something like this. Um, I have it right here. I wanted to use something like this actually. So I wanted to have my protocol and my host using the URL. So with the URL format, I can use return the URL format to my protocol, my request protocol, and my request get. I, want, I wanted to use something like this, but this is not working anymore. So if this is not working anymore, I cannot use it. So it was something that I would love to use, but if it's not possible, let's remove the URL. Uh, let's keep it the way the things that they are, right? So we're going to keep local health for now and we just put the port number at the end. Oh, by the way, I have a typo here. <clears throat> port number, I have that semicolon. Let me save it. And there you go. We have the correct API now. So this is pretty much how things are working. Um, one last thing that I want to use, um, I want to handle my requests in separate routes files. Those route files will handle, um, in order to have a little more clean input file, and we can have a better um, way to expose those. So the way that I like it to use is I, I like here to use in my source I will create a new folder called roads and in here I will use a new file called index javascript and a new file called root javascript so my root javascript is going to be my root path and my root path is going to be actually really really simple what I want to have there, I need to import something from Express in order to make make this work. Um, because we don't have access to the application here, so we need to use something that will allow us to have a, a better economy of the router. So what we need to import is actually this router from Express. It will allow to have an object, router, that came from that. And in that router, we're going to use a simple, uh, let's actually get all this, paste it right here. But instead will be an application going to be router. Right? And, and now, we save that. As you can see, the logger is not there, so we need to import it. So we go import. Um, how can we import that logger? You know what? Probably we need to have it as, as a helper. Okay. So let's put the logger that we have here. It's going to be Pino. Let's copy this too. Let's actually remove it from here. Right? Let's create a new helper, new file, logger, so JavaScript. I paste those and we're going to export that logger. Oh, we have a export default logger. 
Dobro. Let me check. Close logger and export default logger, I believe. There you go. So by default, here we're going to use export the logger. Why we especially export it as a default? Because we're just exporting one element. That's why we're using like this. If we have several, we can have a more separate way. But for now, we can keep it like this. It's a best practice. And here, what we can actually use is import logger from or help of logger. And this should work fine. That means that here at root, we can do the same. Import logger from and in this case it's going to be one level back logger and this should work perfect but now that we import the router we just actually need to export default router in our index javascript and i will show why i didn't like this we want to use pretty much the same import router from from express and I will then import root from my root and let's do const router equal router I will export that router. But before that, we need to use the root. So here, the pretty cool thing about this router is those the roots now are working as middleware. So I can actually use router dot use root. Oops. So what I did it like this, because here later I will import several routes. All of them are going to be listed here and it's going to export just as one file. That's why I have it like this. And something pretty cool about the root is that we can actually keep it the way that, that it is because it's going to be the root path. Now that we have that, everything is green, we go back to our main index JavaScript or server. We want to get rid of this. After we import the logger, we need to import now router from roots. We don't need to specify the JavaScript file because we can't already call it index yet. For now, after we use all this, we can actually just use application, use router. So what we did is we call the router now for my root. My root is important my index. At the same time, this index in the root is important the root file that have specified this one from here. Looks complex, but later when we start adding new routes, you will see the benefit to have it like this. If I make a call, everything is still working and everything is the way that it's supposed to. Now we have an issue here. Let me just get out. Let me restart the server just in case. Hmm. Cannot read property push. Who's using the push here? Interesting. Are we using this push somewhere?
I don't see what is complaining, actually. This is interesting. I will look at this later outside the video, but for now, you can actually see the application working. Oh, we cannot connect to the server anymore. Where is that push? Application is louder. From my roads. Hmm. Very interesting. So let me pause the video for now and let me check what is actually happening. Okay, I believe I found the issue. So here in the root, we imported the router as a function, but the index we are not doing it. So that's an issue. So let me import that a function too. And that should clear in theory. Please. Let me get out. Let me start my server. Okay, application starter. Let me make the call. It's working. And uh, everything is working the way it's supposed to. Let me make a couple more calls. And um, yes, it's doing everything. So my issue was that here in the index, my router, I was not doing the function itself. So that was my issue. Now that we find it, you can actually continue. One of the things that I want to do before I close this video is something that I showed you before. When we call something that doesn't exist, we actually get in text response. One, I don't want to use text. I want to have a Java uh, JSON response but we need to handle the 404 a little more gracefully as i said before express use middlewares middlewares are functions that run between functions so everything that we created so far here all those are actually middlewares and we're using a, our express application it's going to use morgan it's going to use course it's going to use helmet it's going to use the router and then we'll listen something in this particular port so all these middlewares actually run in order. That means if I put my router first, um, I believe it's going to work like that. And I make the call. You will see that my Morgan didn't work. It's not showing it. And my helmet is not working. It's not doing all those. Why? because the router is before those. So something that Express uses is, everything that uses, it uses sequentially. It's going to use this first, and then this, and then this, and go on. That's why our routes need to be after this element. Let me save it. In order to the Morgan logger, and for the helmet uh, um, secure headers be enabled. As you can see, the cross origin is not there either. So now that we put it there, we save it. It's running, and I execute again. I have my 17 headers now, including my access control allow origin, and all the four security ones are actually there. Right? So it's really important to use those. So the way to handle the 404 is to use something after your router and that is going to be something similar that we use for view that means all the rest of the requests you do something about it and I want to show you exactly how to use it so let me check really quick my notes here and in my helpers I will create a new file called errors And in those errors, I will use something really simple. 
check. So every middleware is actually a function. Let's call the created one. So now that's found. It's going to be a function that's going to be used to do something and returning something. Right? So this does sounds it takes three different elements as input. It takes the request, it takes the response, and it takes the next element. Next element actually is the one that will tell us if we need to stop or we need to continue. This is really important. So now that we have those, and now we're saying that it's no use, let's actually create the error. So let's const error is going to be equal a new error. If we go here, we want to specify the error automatically. And we'll specify a new error and we'll say something like this not found and we'll put here we can actually send the request dot I believe call the you now URL or response or we need to change the status to be 404 and then we will proceed with the error if we didn't send anything here that means it continue like doing whatever you do but now when we do next and something the application will know what how to handle it right so here is just a simple middleware that will take everything that it came it will generate an error by default and will respond with status 404 and then we'll set that error so that not found actually need to be exported uh, well because we have one let's actually do export default not found right that means that the index, oops, not the index for the browse, the index for the server. We need to import from helpers errors. We need to import not found. So we can use this after the router and after all the routes that we already established we create another middleware and we use not found it's going to be right here as a simple like that if we execute it it still says that not found on the finite because we are handle it right there we need to now that we have a not found route we need to have an error handler right because we are creating that particular error and then we'll show you something also we need to have this to be a little more pretty that that the one that we actually have right now so now that we have or not found there let's actually create an error handler and that error handler is going to be the one that handles that particular error we created as well found. So I have something already here. And I will explain you what it actually does. Mm, I believe we can remove next from here. So the first element should actually should be an error, right? And the fourth element is going to be next. Next. I will fix this later. So here, the only things I'm going to be using is I need to import my logger. Import logger from... I'm already inside 
helper, so that means logger is right there. And that means that my logger error is going to be this. And then I will just say, you know what, my status code. If a status code is equal to 200, changes to 500. By default, all my response is going to be 200 by default. That means that you say that 200 is fine, and you say, you know what, hey, change it. If it's not 200, I will tell him that, you know what, stay in the same status code that you already have. Now, I will log that error in my, in my console. I will send the status of my response at the status response. When it's on a 404, that is the way it's set up right here. And I will respond with a JSON file with this particular message. Right? Now, something that I didn't tell you here is when we are in production, we are not going to say anything. When we are in development, we are actually going to send the error stack. The error stack it is important not to show it in a production environment, but it is important just to have it right there. So let's, let me see if I can remove it next from here it's going to work. Um, my not EMB is not going to no production by default. So that means that now I can go to my index here in my not found actually going to change from not found comma error handler and my application will change from from this to give me a second error handler so that means when, when handler not found it's going to go send to next and the error handler is going to be the last middleware always because this pretty much will cache everything and will tell us what issue or what error. So now if I send this, oh it didn't work. Let's see. Let me console. Let me execute it again. Let me call X. And it's not using it. Why is not using it? Oh, because we're missing next from here we actually need to have next here so we will see how we can actually change this the problem let's say no use variable quick fix uh perfect next with underscore we will save it with that do you like it or not no i didn't like it Now we have an issue here, why? Oh, my close really did one by accident. So I'm gonna see what is actually telling me. Remove your loss exploration? No, perfect. All your loss exploration will be not possible. You said we'll not use survival for this line. Yes. So with this little thing, we are just saying, like, ignore this error. It's something that you need to work on that, right? So that will make the application run. We need to send it. And we have a message, not found, undefined. And we have the error stack right here. And it's sending as a JSON, as you can see it. We're going to get it the same stack trace here, right? We see actually the code here. And is working the way it's supposed to. Now, one last thing. This says that we are in production. So let's actually change my node EMB equal production. Let's production. Right now we are in development environment, right? Let me console this. Let me use from dev again. Okay, it's running. 
and it may call to the no existing one it will not give me the state track just give me that pop emoji but we can still see at the logs the the all the stuff so this is a really common and good practice those error logs is going to be saving to your logs the logs that you want to have on the server but to the clients you don't need to send those errors right there so it's a really good option to have it like this that's why here in the error you can say that when the environmental variable from node we are in the production environment we are going to send that emoji if not we send the error stack okay so let me just remove my env variables to be development We need, whenever we change EMB files, the server always need to get a starter. Uh, now we have the error stack right here. So it tells you all oh, where it's located and what is the issue, what is actually happening, right? If I do, do the main one, it's still working. And it, we can see it right here. The first call was an error. We see the error here. We see the 404, actually, what happened. And then we make a call that was successful, we can actually see it right here. Okay? So I believe we have almost everything that I want. I will do one extra thing. I will create... I will duplicate this CMB file. Uh, can I duplicate it from here? No, I can't duplicate it. I can copy and paste it. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's rename it to emb.emb I like to put it dot example right and that dot emb example what it will have is everything in my dot emb but without values or use the values that should be by default So the region, I don't put anything there. We can actually just leave it like this. It's probably going to be a little bit better. Why are you saying that? And you will ask that, why I'm doing this? Because I want to add that DMB variable example without values to my repository. Because whenever I move to the server, I will know exactly what are the names that I need to fill up. That's pretty much what I have like it and my real one the EMB will not be saved in the repo and that will have actually the real values that I need to have so that means that my EMB example need to be tracked to this now that I'm looking at this probably need to do something extra let me just install this is optional but you can look for dot EMB and we have this one that support .dmb to give you that little color code. I believe it's going to be important. But what is this one? It's different. I never saw it. Mm, no, that's okay. So let's install this one .dmb. Perfect. That means if we open it, we have that little color code. So we can now add comments. And those comments going to be also saved there. Let's see. If, um, main node in BME mode. Application general general configuration. Um, request log level um, this will be course origin URL so that way we can have commented out the EMB everything that starts with a pound is a comment and we have that little cool folder let me put everything in my example of course just removing those extra things that we don't need Mm -hmm. 
perfect. So for the end, let me add everything that we did and add it or purpose configuration. Okay. On the next video, what we're going to be using for Kiretti is now the actual API. Now that we have the server a little more robust and a little more production ready. So for now, hope that you like it. Any question, any doubt, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding, everybody.